Reiko and Sector is an absolutely fascinating team, filled with so much fun and possibilities that I don't know if I can see myself playing anyone else. In this video, we'll be covering missile setups for pressure, armor breaking, and safe launchers, as well as uses for teleport and flamethrower. We will break down the timing of every post-combo missile call into easy-to-understand formulas that show you what you can get from each setup. It's still early in the game, so I'm sure there's much more to be discovered, but I'm going to show you why this team rocks. Hello, I'm under the mayo, and yeah, I'm back. Mortal Kombat, baby! The most obvious benefit to Reiko is the up missile during zoning. As an ambush cameo, this missile can be called at any time, giving great synergy with Reiko's shurikens and long-range normals and specials. Calling a close missile full screen will in some cases allow you to throw out an EX slide that is now safe because of the missile protection. Some characters have a reversal that's fast enough to punish, but many are just forced to take it. And throwing shurikens after a short delay from a missile call will lead to a frame trap for a second shuriken. If you call a teleport instead, the teleport will actually connect as a combo if the missile hits, or if they block the missile and try to move, the teleport hits solo. If the teleport hits in either case, and you're not 100% full screen away, just close to the edge, Reiko gets a full screen confirmable combo with an EX slide that has a short run at the beginning. The teleport is an ever-present threat for your opponent, especially for Reiko because of his ability to confirm it into combo. Teleport is also a good combo extender for a little more meterless damage. Jabs or back 3 into knee leads to standing 1 teleport, and an easy 3-4 tackle ender for 270 or 280 damage, no meter. You can also call Teleport from an anti-air jab for some good meterless damage. He also has Teleport extensions from other anti-air combos. And I'm currently thinking meterless damage is really important for Reiko because of the 2 bar cost of EX Command Grab and saving for Breaker. Before we get to missile setups, we'll talk about the Flamethrower. It's not a great move to throw out due to its short range and being punishable, but it is quite plus on hit and grants a restand at the end of a combo to eliminate wake up options. Due to its pushback, it's hard to get anything off this other than a dash forward 4 that's inescapable by jumping, but can be backdashed or armored, or an EX slide or EX knee that can only be armored or blocked, but that's a very dangerous risk because you're punishable on block. However, in the corner, you can end several combo starters with Standing 3 Flame or 4-3-4 Flame to take advantage of what seems to be a good 20 plus frames. Your jabs, lows, overhead, and your mids are 100% inescapable here. They cannot activate armor. They have to block here, and if they don't, they get launched again, and you can put them back in the blender. An important factor in this is that Flamethrower immediately starts recharging the cameo bar, whereas Teleport and Missile have a delay. The faster Flamethrower recharge means you can use it in these resets and quickly recover the resource, so much that if you continue to open up your opponent, you can get three Flamethrowers in a sequence. If you're wondering what the damage difference is between ending a meterless combo in a standard way and ending with a flamethrower, it depends on the combo starter. But typically, you're sacrificing about 40 to 50 damage for the setup. Not negligible, but you are eliminating their wake up and forcing them into a 50 50 or grab situation. We're close to talking about missile setups, but first we gotta talk about the missile itself. A cool trick is calling the homing missile during a back grab when your opponent spins around. You call it right when you punch them. The missile will hit them at the end, raising damage to 150. Eh, hey, it, it could win a match. A missile called in the corner can greatly extend Reiko's damage, with a missile called on the second hit of forward 123, allowing a jump 121 into standing 3 EX slide 3 command grab for 379 damage. And you should be aware that Far Missile and Close Missile for some reason get inverted during your command grab and tackle. Close Missile will land behind your opponent during these animations for some unknown reason. 
I thought it had something to do with the direction you were facing during the grab, but no. During the tackle, you and your opponent are clearly facing each other, and the missiles still come out backwards. So yeah, be aware of that. Mortal Kombat. Now, let's get to missile setups. According to my current measurements, there are four timings for post-combo missile setups. A, B, C, and D. A. Anti-wake-up armor break and inescapable grab. B. Anti-delayed wake-up and armor break. Or safe EX slide, forward four, tackle, and jailing back three shuriken. C. One two stagger pressure and safe knee and back three shuriken. And D. Forward one two stagger pressure and safe back three knee. The timings of A, B, C, and D can be tied to visual signals during the tackle and command grab animations. For the command grab, A is the point of contact, B is 12 noon above your head, C is ground contact, and D is the start of the recovery animation. For the tackle, A is the first punch, B is the second, C is third, and D is the start of the recovery animation. First, we'll examine the tackle, because it is by far the most beneficial combo ender to use for missile setups. From timing A, the first punch, the missile will come down right when the opponent is getting off the ground, meaning it will stop them from jumping, backdashing, and mashing down one. If you attack immediately, you'll be able to break most armored wakeups. Highs, mids, lows, overheads, grabs, doesn't matter, you're gonna win. With this timing, you can get a free normal or command grab. If you take this free grab, the missile interrupts and will give you anywhere from 50 to 100 damage depending on the grab you use. Normal, command grab, and EX command grab. But hey, it's nice, you're getting an average of 70 damage from a free command grab setup. However, this setup is vulnerable to delayed wake up. Timing B from the second punch does two things. It protects you against delayed wake-ups because the missile comes down later, meaning you can time this with a delayed normal to break armor, and a delayed grab will result in the same missile interruption. Or, if you think the opponent is going to get up normally, this timing allows you to throw out several of your ranged attacks for free. You can do forward 4 to check them, and the missile protects you. Back 3 shuriken stops them from ducking the projectile because of the missile, they're jailed into blocking it all, and with EX Shuriken, you're looking at crazy chip damage. You can do a tackle, and the missile protects you. This timing also makes a fast grab safe, because the delayed rocket will protect you. And most importantly, you can do EX Slide, and the missile protects you. And if you get the hit, it's easily confirmable into a 3-4 tackle combo, as long as you figure the missile timing into account during the juggle. So we've got two timings, one beating wake up armor and wake up buttons, basically giving you a free mix up or a grab if you want it, and another beating delayed wake up or giving you a free EX slide or back three shuriken jailing. Now timings C and D are for when you suspect the opponent is simply going to get up normally and block. And this is where we create pressure and find a few more safe combo launchers. Timing C on the third punch lets you dash in for 1-2 pressure, and if 1-2 connects you can confirm into knee and finish your combo, but if it doesn't, you can command grab, down 1, or go into forward 1-2, and the missile will stop them from interrupting you with their down 1. The timing is so perfect on this setup, your opponent down one you after your 1-2 will mean the missile hits them, and if they wait to block the missile and then try to down one, your forward one mid will hit them first. They're not getting out. And when they're scared of this pressure, that opens up your grab. This is the ideal setup timing for missile pressure, but because of the late call, they can escape by jumping or backdashing or armor. This is only for when you think they're gonna sit and block. You can also use this timing to do a knee, which confirms into combo if it hits, but it's also protected by the missile if blocked. You can be punished with something very fast, but that's it. Small price to pay for a launcher on block. You can also do back 3 shuriken, which is protected by the missile, but you are vulnerable to a down 4 in this timing. Timing D, called during the recovery state, is interesting because it's basically a variation of timing C. 
Timing D has you able to dash in with a forward 1-2. If it hits, you can confirm into forward 1-2-3 and do your combo. But if it's blocked, you can hold block and watch the missile hit them if they try to down one, and then you can confirm into forward 1-2-3 to continue. If they block the missile, they can down one to stop your forward one, but if you command grab, it'll eat their down one. Timing D also gives you a safe back three knee. Just throw it out. If it hits, juggle with the missile and get a combo. Variations in timing can lead to being punishable by a very fast reversal or being completely safe. That's the difference a few frames makes. Wow, so that's a lot of stuff. But here's the table that shows how all this is categorized. If you simplify it, timing A is anti-wake-up and free grab, timing B is anti-delayed wake-up and safe slide, forward 4, tackle, and back 3 shurikens, timing C is jab pressure, safe knee, and back 3 shurikens, and timing D is forward 1-2 pressure and safe back 3 knee. You can learn all this with practice. I'm on my way, I know you can do it too. But what about command grab? Well, command grab really limits our options because of the distance we're left at and the reduced hit advantage. The same timing formulas apply, but several options are eliminated. Timing A will keep the opponent from jumping, dashing, or pressing a button, but in some cases you won't be able to break wake up armor if it's too fast. If they don't wake up, you can go into your pressure strings or grabs. Timing B is largely unchanged, it's still anti-delayed wake up, and you can still get the safe EX slide, forward 4, and tackle, as well as the jailing back 3 shuriken. Timing C and D is where it all falls apart, because you're just not close enough to take advantage of the missile setup. I'm not saying you can't use missile pressure at all, sure if they're blocking you can make it work, but due to the delayed missile and the distance, they're probably gonna get out. So you want to use your other options from these setups. Timing C still gives you a safe knee launcher and back 3 shuriken. I shouldn't say the knee is safe, it can be hit with a fast reversal, but that's it. It's still really good. Timing D still gives you a safe back 3 knee. So those are the timings for Reiko Sector missile setups. Using Sector really makes the tackle the ideal combo ender over command grab, though you'll be sacrificing damage to do it in some cases. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of Reiko Sector, I'm sure there's a lot more out there. If you have some tech for the team, or if I've forgotten something obvious, please let me know in the comments. Follow this channel, and I'll see you soon.